Welcome back to Coast to Coast Sports, bringing it back with Vinny here. Uh, I think this is episode three with him on this channel. We've done a few other episodes with him on the previous channel. You can check those out as well. It's week nine of the NFL, wow. almost week 10. We are halfway through the season yes, officially. Are. So, Vinny, let's hear it. Halfway through the season, give me your playoff teams. Ooh, and so, give me and give me your your seedings. Your okay, so seating. so I got my playoff teams. So let's start with the AFC. I think the AFC is a harder one to call. So let's uh, let's call the AFC right now. Number one in the AFC to finish the season. I'm not saying playoffs. I'm not saying to win the playoffs. I'm saying to win the AFC home field advantage by week first week. Kansas City Chiefs. You know, I, I I can see it. I'm not sure if they're going to get the one seed, but I definitely can see them. Uh, I think, th obviously, they're going to win their division. Yes, absolutely. I think they are the obvious winners to win the AFC West. I mean, if the Chargers somehow come out of that division winning it, I would be completely shocked, but I don't think they will. And um, But I will say this, though. I was very, very um, close to putting the second team to be my number one to win the AFC. And that's the Jacksonville Jaguars coming out of the AFC yes. South. Yes, I love to hear it. The Jags are, I think the Jags are going to be the one seed. I do. I also think... Um, easy schedule. They do have an easy schedule, but I think their toughest game in the next few weeks is going to be this Niners game they have. And you'll hear yeah. my thoughts about it later. But I do believe they're going to be the second best team in the AFC coming out of uh, the regular season. Now to start off the third team from the AFC East, the Miami Dolphins. I think... When you have statistically so far through half of a season through football, the best Miami, um, the best offense in the league, and not just like for this season, but for a lot of seasons, like for the decade. Um, what is their coach's name again? I know it's something Daniels, right? It's uh, uh, Mike McDaniel. Yeah, Mike Mc, uh, McDaniel's or Daniel? Uh, I'm not sure if there's uh, whatever he is. He did a great job implementing that Kyle Shanahan style offense in the Miami. Great run, great, great passing game. Honestly, just a great team. The only problem is they have a tough time beating those really good defensive teams uh, because their defense is not good. Defense is not good, and that's where they struggle. And uh, the offense does fine. Like against the Chiefs, they, sh uh, they, sh they, sh they got shut out that first half. You know, that's the first time they got shut out in the half. But they came back, got two touchdowns. Should have done better in that second half, but you know what? Get facing against Kansas City, who's got a top five defense right now, that's not bad. But they they need they need to be more consistent about being offensively better against good, good defensive teams. Yeah, I can agree with all that. Um, so you've got uh, you got the Bengals winning. Yeah. So here's my uh, fourth. North. So here's this is what I want to really hear about this. Okay. So I have a very interesting opinion about the AFC North and why I think they're going to be coming fourth. The Ravens are seven and two. Now you're saying yeah. Tied for second in that division, Bengals 5-3. and three. Why do I have the Bengals over the Ravens? I think when you look at the ASC North, you look at all four of those teams, all of them are truly in the hunt for the playoff, yeah. for a wild card or a division spot. But when you look at the Bengals, they're, they're, they're slowly turning their gears. I mean, this is, this is like we're, we're seeing the Bengals coming back to full form. Um, this coming week, they're playing against, if I can pull it up quickly enough, they play against Houston. That's a win. And this is where I think the Ravens start to lose the North. Is at home against the Browns. They they're already not, beat the nope, Browns. They're not going to lose their home. They are, they already beat the Browns. And how the AFC North usually either. plays, nope. They usually split. Not so, at home. Not at home. They're not losing at home. I would. I don't I, think. I don't think Baltimore lose. I think that Baltimore might lose to the Bengals, but I think Baltimore is. They might actually be the number one seed. They could be the number one I, seed. I do not agree with your take on the Ravens here. That, that, that may be true, but here's so, I mean, the my, Ravens here's are my firing at all cylinders right They now. are, but they those two losses they had, and I, I, and I, oh, I look well, at those two losses. In the season. They, they were, were early, they in, the early season, in the season, but they still happened. So I still and the think, Bengals had three losses early in the season. Yeah, but that was against Burrow when he was calf injured. Like there was a lot of there was a lot of things going into that, and there was a lot of things going to the Ravens. But I think when you look at the AFC North. All those teams are competitive. I think a lot of them, those series are going to be split. And I think that's where the Ravens lose it. They're going to be in a like a very like 11-6 against the, the Bengals. And I think the Bengals are going to have it over them when it's kind So of, you think the Ravens, they're 7-2 they're and two right now. You think they're going to go 5-4? and four Something like way? that. Yep. Something like wow. that. Four I feel like the Bengals wow. will make it competitive. 
I think um, the Ravens will be there. I think they'll have probably not. I think 11 6, 10 7 is the worst they do. I think 13 4 is probably a realistic number for the Ravens. I think they go 13 and 4, honestly. I do think they can do that, but I also think that they can go 12 and 5, and then the Bengals go 12 and 5, and the Bengals have the game over them. And that's where I think the last game of the season wow. really does matter. And so those are my AFC division leaders. I want to get into the wild card teams a little later because I want to talk about that uh, in a little more depth. So my NFC division leaders in, in, in order, I think these are the easy ones to call. Number one, Eagles first. I mean, eight and one. Yeah. Can't really think of any other team coming to number one in the NFC, getting that buy first week. But number two, I'm going to stick with the Lions on this one. I think the Lions, they've proved themselves to be a great team. And I think... What's going to happen to the Niners is that they're going to win the division, and I have them at third, but I think they're just, they, they need another year or two to mesh with Brock Purdy, and then they'll be a really good contending team coming forward. And number four, I, and I, I know you're eyeing on this one, Levi, I have the Atlanta Falcons to win the NFC South. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I, no, I, I, I listen to your power rankings. I listen to your power rankings. And we lost the back <laughs> The Saints are going to win that division. There is no way the Falcons win that division. They just benched their quarterback. But t- Taylor Heineke Taylor looked good. Taylor, well, there's a reason why he's a backup. Well, he, didn't he lose um, to the Vikings? To didn't he lose to Josh Dobbs? Who just Josh Dobbs? Like, hey, like your friend said on the podcast, Josh Dobbs is the guy. Okay, so he's the, the, the guy. Falcons defense goes. They're playing against a quarterback who doesn't even know the playbook. He doesn't even know the names of his offensive linemen. And he they got let, there in one week. And they let Josh Dobbs drop 31 on them. A without, baller is a baller, Levi. With, with no a baller is a baller. A when baller is a baller. The defense, that should have been a layup. That should have been the easiest win for the Falcons this season. I don't think season. so. I don't think so. Even if Kirk was out. A backup quarterback who doesn't know the playbook, he's not supposed to win that game. Good There's quarterbacks, no regardless of playbook, Oh, will do good. my gosh. Jo- are we really going to call Josh Dobbs a good quarterback now? He looked great he's, with the Cardinals, and the Cardinals were terrible. He's 2-12 in his career as he's a He's 2-12, but look at what, what he's done with... Yeah, he lost a bunch of games. He lost a bunch of games with nobody. James Conner's injured. He had to do everything himself. And right now, I mean, he may I, have the most improved. I would vote I him would for not. most improved. Well, maybe most well most improved is not an award. So I don't know. I, if that, I know that's the basketball award, but I mean, it should be an NFL award because this guy, man, Josh Dobbs is the next Geno Smith. He's he's like a one year wonder. I mean, maybe we'll see. We'll see how it that, goes. You cannot tell me that the Saints are a worse team than the Falcons right now. I. No, I don't. I don't your agree guy, with you. But your guy, Derek is balling out here's in my New thing. Orleans. I agree with your takes on the Saints are good and they're on a good streak. But I feel like they're going to hit a bad streak. I think they're going to go out. Well, who do they play this week? They play. I think they could be. They're Minnesota. at Minnesota. They're I think losing they could Minnesota. Be Minnesota this nope, week. Nope. I think. Well, they're both five and four. The I Saints, think the Saints have a better quarterback, better better receivers. If Justin Jefferson doesn't play, better running back, better O line, better defense. What do the Saints have? What do the Vikings have that's better than the Saints? They have a better receiving core than the Saints. No, Justin Jefferson might. Not and they have play. the best. They have the best defensive end in the league right now with ten sacks. Daniel Hunter. They're going to pressure the quarterback. Yeah, and their and defense is still not very good. That's true, but Daniel Hunter will get to the quarterback, and that pocket, that so offensive line is not good. Der- well, the Saints have a better line than the Vikings. It's true. Derek Carr is he better than Josh Dobbs? Right now in his career, yeah, Derek Carr is better. But I think no. As, but as far as as an overall, as a quarterback, as an overall, I mean, you, oh my, you're yeah, so Derek Carr is better okay, than Josh thank Dobbs. You, thank you. Thank I'm not. I'm not arguing that Josh Dobbs is better. I'm just saying that right now, yeah, know. Derek Carr's better. I think the Saints could. I'm not sure who I'll pick in that game yet, but I think the Saints. Have, I got the Vikings. The Saints have one. every chance in the world. Kamara just has to run it down their throat. True. Taysom Hill's been bowling out. That's true. I don't know, man. But here's my thing. Disagree. Here's my take. Here's my take. Scrappy teams will win, and they will surprise you. And, and I think the Falcons are scrappier than the Saints, and they're going to win yeah, that division. You know the way Kyle Pitts has scored four touchdowns in his career really, it really gives you hope. It's not the I'm not saying Kyle Pitts is going to be it, but I feel like they're going to find ways to win. They're ugly wins, like Steelers games have been for the last few years, but they will win and they'll win that division. That is my take. Okay. So well, now here I'm is. My NFL teams truly in the hunt for wild cards. So you're gonna pick wild card teams, or are you just gonna? Take I'm gonna. Teams so, so here's my thing. So I have and and two of the teams that you have in the hunt just aren't in the hunt. So well, here's the thing. Okay, so here's this. here's here's my thing. So I put teams who I think are in the hunt, who are truly in the hunt, who have a somewhat of a chance, whether it's slim or not, 
that could compete pretty decently in a wild card game. And I have two good teams in the wild cards who I think definitely will make wild cards or have a good shot at winning it. And then I have a dark horse wild card team that I okay. pick for each um, conference. Now, AFC, I have the Ravens, the Browns, the Bills, the Chargers, the Steelers, Texans, Colts, Jets, and Titans. I think the AFC is very competitive for these wild card spots. And I think any one of these teams could have a shot at getting a wild card spot. And for my two teams who I do think we're going to get those wild card spots, I think definitely the Ravens, because I didn't pick the Ravens to win the North. So the Titan, how are the Titans? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let, let me get to that. Let me get to that. So let me get to that. The Ravens, I think they're going to come out as the second best team in the AFC North. So I have them as the number one wild card spot. And then I'm going to have the Steelers, my Steelers, who are going to just be scrappy enough to get that second wild card spot. I don't want them to. I don't think they're good enough, but I feel like they're going to win some of these games where they really should have no business winning. They're just going to surprise people, and then they'll flop in the playoffs. That's usually how we go, but I believe the Steelers will get a wild card spot. And now here's my dark horse wild card team. It's what you mentioned, the Tennessee Titans. Oh I think the Titans gosh. with Will Levis. Wow. That is a hot one. It's a hot one. That is a hot one. Folks. I think the Titans will surprise people. Will Levis looked good against the Steelers. They didn't look great, but he looked good. Second weekend, he had four touchdowns his first game. He plays. And then he had zero against Pittsburgh. Well, a Pittsburgh's a good practice. defense. Pittsburgh's a good defense. And he's pro- he, he might lose to Tampa. And then you're probably going to go back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers craze that you were on earlier. Oh, let's, so let's see about that. But I think Tennessee will beat Tampa at Tampa. That's my prediction. I think the the Titans will be a shocking team that's going to so be the, scrappy. They're three and five, so they they would almost have to win out to make the play. Almost, but I think they with have Will about Levis, one more loss before they're eliminated. Because well, three, you're, five, not, you're not making it with nine wins. You might not even make it with ten wins in the AFC. That might be true, but a lot of these teams. So, I mean, the Bills. They're so, five and four. Yeah, but the Bills are the Bills. The Bills have a great team. So but we'll see about so let me ask like So that. the Broncos are also three and five. You didn't. You don't have them as truly in the hunt. No. What I is don't the know. difference between the Jet between the Titans and Broncos? Titans, the division. The I division. Think the, I think the Broncos the are division. The, the, I would the, say this. What's different about the division? You I think the, the Broncos have, have a harder have division. The Chiefs. I think the Broncos have a harder division to come out of. I think the Broncos have to face the Raiders, who they can lose at home, even though they're. Not that good. Well, they already lost. To the they Raiders beat the Chiefs. No, no, they didn't. Yeah, they beat the Chiefs. That was good. They, the they already Chiefs. they already played the Chiefs, but they had to split that series. Yeah. And then they play the Chargers, which I think they got to lose to the Chargers. I'm, I think the Titans, the Titans. The Titans. I think they have a good. They have a better chance of beating the Colts, the Texans, to get those wins than they do the Bron- than the Broncos do against the Raiders and the Chargers. So you're looking in my at schedule. Opinion. Okay. I'm looking at schedule. Here. So then again, I will pose you this. Titans and Colts. I don't think the Colts are true contenders either. I think just um, record. But, but give the... me this. So why is why is the Raiders who are four and five? Why aren't they there? I think they have a better record than the Titans. I think one is just the wins they got are just really downright ugly. Then you have your coach, your head coach got fired. I I just think they're just going on a downhill, and it's just they, not their last not... win wasn't ugly at all. Their last win was a domination. And that was, Giants thirty to seven. They, yeah, but that's the Giants though. Giants one of the worst teams in the league. You can't. But let me ask you. So, so what? What makes the Colts better than the Raiders? What makes Colts better than the Raiders is that I think the offensive consistency. Every game the Raiders have played, they've thrown a pick. Every okay, single fair. game. And, they've so, and a pick. Gardner Minshew averages two picks a game. So that's true. But but Gardner Minshew also averages like three hundred yards passing per game, and that running in game is like seventy five hundred yards and a how, game. And and how and they average they, like thirty points a game. Like this is well, a their last game. game they scored like 20, 28 points, but that was because they oh, had God. they had two pick sixes off of Bryce Young. That's so true. the offense wasn't really cooking. It was really the defense. That but was but cooking. but even if the offense doesn't cook, the defense will be there and the defense good enough. I mean Zaire uh, Zaire Franklin know, or Franklin whatever his name that I Ryan. I would put the Raiders ahead of Colts, Titans and maybe also even the Jets at this point. I think the Jets, yeah, I will see I the, put Raiders, the Jets the there. Raiders play the Jets this week. So we'll see who we'll see. I think I got the Jets on that game. I think the Jets have a chance, but I don't know how big of a chance they have. Now let's go into much. let's go into the NFC truly in the hunt NFL teams. I have five compared to the nine in the AFC because I really think the NFC is a lot easier to come out of right yeah. now than the AFC. And and wow, one team is not on that list. Do you want to tell us which team is not in your five? Well, I'll, I'll talk about the five teams I do have. 
I have the Vikings and the Cowboys, who I both think are wild card teams, and then my three teams who I think have it uh, are truly in the hunt: Seahawks, Commanders, and the Saints. What is the team that you so, were referring to? So, well, hang on. First off, you definitively think the Vikings are more of a lock to make the playoffs than the Seahawks. I think right now the Seahawks look a little shaky. I'm not saying I think they're more definitive That's because of one game that you think would look shaky. I mean, yes, but I think overall. Because the Vikings, they they lost to Tampa, who's terrible. But that was first game of the week, first game of the season. Okay, so but the Vikings are on a ba- the they're, they're on a bounce back. I see the Vikings on the bounce back, so I'm looking at the rest of that schedule. I'm looking at the the streak they're going on right now. I'm seeing that they got momentum, so I think the momentum's in the Vikings' favor. I think the Cowboys have ch- too good of a defense to miss the playoffs. And then I think the Seahawks. Think the Vikings have too good of a defense. No, no, no Cowboys. Cowboys. Okay. Cowboys have too good of a defense to miss the playoffs. Yeah. And the Vikings are just on a are just momentum. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yes. And then and what was the team that you were uh, that you think I missed on the truly well, in the hub? Not that you missed him, but I mean, a month ago you were telling me how Baker Mayfield's a top five quarterback in the NFL. Well, that was that was at the top. I didn't say top five. And I the said Buccaneers it was Buccaneers are nowhere to be found. Well, I said they had the contenders list. I had I said then, and I will say it now. I thought at the time the Buccaneers looked good enough yeah. to look like they could be a ten seventeen. I'm not saying they were going to be. I just said if they play right, they could be, and that's why I only have I don't have the Buccaneers here. And so for the locks, I said Vikings and Cowboys. But for my dark horse wildcard team, another scrappy team who I just think, even though they got rid of players before the deadline, they're going to just sneak in there. I think the Commanders. I think Sam Howell leading the league in second in passing yards. That's it's going to be ugly games. If, if they if they beat Seattle, they'll be they'll become the favorites to win the seventh wild card. I, I do think and, I think uh, the Buck Commanders are good enough. You might not to be it. hearing anymore from me on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna. I say. think that will be a really a tough time. But I think Commanders, you know, second passing yards. Um, Sam Howell, he might be a dark horse to be the next Kirk Cousins in the next few years. Or I don't even think dark horse. He might. He probably will be the Kirk Cousins of this new era of quarterbacks. But he looks good, and I think the uh, and I think Commanders even getting rid of uh, getting rid of Monta Sweat and Chase Young. That's what really that's what really makes me think they're not real contenders though cuz yeah. they they don't think they don't view themselves as real contenders. They traded away their two uh best I think it's players. maybe maybe it's not the contenders things, maybe it's about the financing things and that Chase Young and Montez Sweat, they already told the organization, "Hey, we're not going to resign with you guys and yeah. we're going to like we're going to go to contender contenders. We see this team right now, we're off our rookie contract soon. We're not going to we're not going to fly. We're not it's not going to fly here." Yeah, huh? could be. So yes. So we want to go into my surprise teams of the week, or we want to talk more about football, Levi? Yeah, let's do uh, the surprise teams of the week.